In addition to praying the rosary on the five first Saturdays of the month and making the communion of reparation, Our Lady has asked us to keep her company for 15 minutes, meditating upon one of the mysteries contained in her holy rosary. Today we join her in contemplating the Assumption of Our Lady, body and soul into heaven. With the passing of years, Our Lady has become even quieter and more meditative. She hardly takes any nourishment at all. Already, already her spirit seems as if it is passing beyond her into the next world. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich tells us, in the last weeks before she died, she had this instinct to go to Jerusalem, to see the shrines once more, to visit the holy city. We imagine her with Saint John fulfilling this wish, following the way of the cross once more, sinking to the ground, being agonized with the memories of her son's cruel death. And then, according to Saint Alphonsus, some days before Our Lady's death, Almighty God sends the angel Gabriel to her, the same angel that once announced to her the Incarnation. According to Saint Alphonsus, the angel says God has already graciously heard your holy desires and he has sent me to tell you to prepare to leave the earth for he wishes you with him in paradise come then come to take possession of your kingdom for I and all its holy citizens await and desire you our Lady responds to the Holy Angel, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. He, in his pure goodness, has chosen me and made, his made me his mother. Now he calls me to paradise. I neither merited the one nor the other honour. But since he wishes to manifest his infinite liberality towards me, I am ready to go where he wishes. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, may the will of the Lord always be fulfilled in me. And with this message, Our Lady began to instruct Saint John of the coming events, telling him first that soon she was to pass from this world informing him that the other apostles should be gathered, that she wished to see them and share some words with them before her departure from this life. St. Bridget tells us, We may picture the apostles and many holy ones around Mary as her last hour approached. We know the reverence and honour they paid to her. Indeed, the Coptic fathers of the early church give us more detail, more detail for meditation. Now it came to pass that 15 years after the Lord rose from the dead, one day the Holy Virgin Mary called to John and said to him, Fetch for me Peter and James and let them come to me. And he ran in haste and called them to her. When therefore they arrived, the three sat by her, and the fountain of the water of life opened her mouth and said to them, Hear me, O apostles, you who the Lord chose to himself to preach the gospel, do not grieve in your heart that which I will tell you now. For behold, the time of my departure is near at hand. 
that I shall lay down my body, and that my soul and my spirit may go to the Lord to enjoy the good things which God has prepared for those who love him. The end of Our Lady's life is approaching. In her apartment where she lies, there's a great harmony. Indeed, St. Bridget tells us the room is filled with brightness. The holy apostles have been gathered, some miraculously, by the ministry of holy angels, according to Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich. Mary informs those that she is departing from them, at which they break forth in tears and prayers, saying, O oh Mother, are you leaving us? At least give us your last benediction, and do not forget us in our misery. Our Lady says, according to St. Alphonsus, Farewell, my children. I bless you. Do not fear that I shall ever forget you. And then her death comes, not indeed clothed in mourning and sadness as it may come to many others, but adorned with light and joy. Divine love came to cut the thread of her noble life. And as a lamp before going out, her life, amid these last flickerings, flashed forth more brightly and then expired. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich tells us that her moment of departure occurred after receiving our Lord in Holy Communion, administered by Saint Peter and Saint John. Venerable Mary of Agreda tells us that our Lord himself came to receive the Holy Soul of his Blessed Mother, and that some of the Apostles were enlightened as to his presence, yet others heard at the very least the sound of a music heavenly beyond the sounds of this life. A divine fragrance also filled the room and even into the streets. The angels were performing this music. Our Lady reclined back upon her couch, her tunic folded about her sacred body, and the angels singing the words from the canticle, Arise, hasten, my beloved, my dove, my beautiful one, and come. The winter has passed. Our Lady closes her virginal eyes and expires. My friends, the sickness which took away her life was love. What shall we call this mystery of Our Lady's death? Death hardly seems the right word. Her soul passes smoothly into the hands of our Lord, taken straight to heaven in a death of love a breathing forth of love. How could limbo open its gates to her? How could corruption touch her? These things are quite foreign to Our Lady. She passed sweetly into heaven. Saint Alphonsus, turning to us, says, The death of Mary was full of peace and consolation because her life had been all holy. Our death will not be like hers, for our sins will then be a subject of alarm. But hear this, my friends, for anyone who renounces a bad life and consecrates himself to the service of Mary, this good mother will not fail to comfort him in that last moment and obtain for him the grace of dying consoled, as she has done to so many of her faithful servants. 
the Blessed Virgin's pure soul passes into the sanctuary of heaven. Our Lady has departed. According to Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, it happens a few days before the 15th, the 15th of August being the day of her glorious Assumption. There were great wonders at this moment, prodigies, the sun eclipsed, hidden for many hours. Venerable Mary of Agreda says that many birds of different kinds gathered around the cenacle and they groaned and the bystanders themselves were caused to weep by the mourning of these birds. Others were astounded, unsure of what was occurring, but the apostles and disciples and the other faithful knew. And then, Our Lady, her sacred body, is taken to the tomb in a beautiful procession. She's taken there and laid. There is sorrow at her death, and they depart the tomb with tears. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich tells us that certain number of maids who had helped Our Lady in life assisted at her burial. There is great reverence. There is a deep spirit of prayer that night as Our Lady rests, as the apostles and disciples return back to the Seneca, return back to the place of prayer, or according to Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, to the little house in Ephesus where she sees these events as having taken place. But this is not the end of the story. The early church tradition, narrated by Pseudo John, tells us, Then the Saviour ordered the Archangel Michael to roll back the stone from the door of the tomb. And the Lord said, Arise, my beloved and my nearest relation, the one who has not put on corruption by relations with man. I forbid you to suffer destruction of your body in the sepulchre. And immediately, Mary rose from the tomb and blessed the Lord, and falling forward at the feet of the Lord, adored him, saying, I cannot render sufficient thanks to you, O Lord, for your boundless benefits which you have deigned to bestow upon me, your handmaiden. Then together they are lifted up on a cloud and taken back into heaven, the angels along with them, the Lord Jesus himself leading blessed Mary into the paradise of God. According to Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, that moment of reunion between body and soul took place at night, but there was a bright light, a disturbance that was seen by the apostles, causing them to wonder. According to her, it was not till the next day that they discovered the empty tomb, some of the cloths still there, and they realised Our Lady was assumed into heaven. Others inform us that at this moment, this moment of realising Our Lady's departure, they looked up and saw Our Lady at that moment being taken into heaven, body and soul. Another early tradition informs us that St. Thomas, who had failed to arrive in time to see Our Lady before her death, was himself the one who was privileged to see her body assumed into heaven in the very act of it being reunited to her soul. We're informed in one early tradition that it was St. Thomas who asked the apostles, who begged them, let me see her body. He then goes to the place, and seeing the tomb empty, he looks up, and there is his blessed mother, who hands to him her girdle as a precious relic and a memento 
for the church to keep. O oh, Blessed Mother, death was not a penalty you suffered due to sin, but it was a penalty you suffered due to love. Love compelled you to unite yourself with your son, to experience death as he had experienced death. Blessed Mother, I by my sins have merited, have merited death as a just consequence. I embrace this truth. I accept my death as the penance for my sins and a means of being thoroughly conformed to the resurrection, to allow my body, which has been so addicted to vice, to rise again anew, free from all disordered desires. Blessed Mother, may my body be as your body on its resurrection, pure, without sin, solely ordered to Christ and his service. Mother Mary, in your assumption, I see where I hope to go. I see the destination I hope to arrive at. I see the true vocation of my own body. Mother, may this mystery fill me with hope. I desire to be with you and your Son, my Saviour, for all eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.